Hey, what's up guys, Zero One, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about the movie, The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Out of the Shadows, and uh, my thoughts and opinions of what I've thought of the entire thing. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadow, takes place a couple of, uh, what was it, months after the original f reboot film, and this time the turtles have to face off, not just Shredder, but also Crane, the Foot Clan, and Bebop and Rockstead. So this time the audience gets to see Bebop and Rocksteady in the live action, action, live action film. And Leonardo is t is a leader, and he's very much frustrated with the team. He's like you know, kind of speaking to his his sensei, um, what was it, and saying you know, I, I can't you know lead this team. You know, there's they're they're not one mind. You know, they're not their minds aren't set to mine my mind. Or my ways, they're set to their own ways, and you know, Splinter as a sensei says, "Well, that's what makes this team so unique is that you have different points of views and you have different strength and weaknesses. If everybody had the same strength as you, then it would be <clears throat> a very easy or very well maintained team. But at the same time, you wouldn't have this the, the variety that you have right now, and that's one of the things that Leonardo, as a leader, learns." And Raphael, as a brother, uh, kind of learns too that, you know, in order for the team to work, he needs to put uh, his pride to the side and he needs to put his own selfish desire to the side and work as a team. And they all learned as, as brothers. So that was a great thing about the film. Uh, another thing that was great is to see um, Brian T., uh, the actor, portray Shredder. I know it's the 21st century. We want to, you know, pass their typical, you know, characters or actors playing stereotypical uh, parts. But one thing about Brian T is that uh, the man has range. As an, uh, as an actor, he, he has delivered some pretty good performances. And I know if given a good role, he can actually lead his own franchise or lead a franchise. But in this one, I just felt like the Shredder was just standing around and just explaining about, explaining his plots or explaining his story and, and just how to take over the world basically and he really wasn't doing much and the same thing with the second in, second in command second in command was just there to listen to brian t the shredder aka the shredder do his 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 thing which was just talk he never he never you never see uh the shredder doing much than just talking and standing there <laughs> really um, Baxter Stockman comes out uh, as uh, as this goofy scientist that um, is helping the Shredder. Why is he helping the Shredder? Um, I guess they can, the reason why he's helping the Shredder is just so he can be the first person to say, hey, I did or I invented something very unique and very amazing i open a, a wormhole to a different dimension but the only thing is that it's never explained how the shredder and baxter stockman got together as a as a team as a group they just got together and they started working together even though and why baxter stockman would work with shredder or or partner up with the shredder beats me i mean the guy is intelligent the guy has a state-of-the-art you know laboratory he's very much rich, but yet he decides to ally himself to an evil uh, warlord or, or drug lord or whatever you know, the Shredder is. Um, we also have an appearance from Crane. Uh, as we all, if any of you are fans of the Turtles, uh, Crane is the brain looking uh, person that would always work with the Shredder and try to take down the Turtles. Uh, he's from uh, Dimension X, and he wants to take over the Earth. In the Turtles, in the Turtle film, or in the Out of the Shadows film, he wants to come to Earth and basically destroy it. Why he come, wants to come to Earth and destroy it? Beats me. <laughs> Beats me. It's never explained why he wants to come to Earth and destroy it. It's never explained why he, he you know picked Earth in the first place. He just wants to come and destroy it. I went to go see this film because of nostalgia. I grew up watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was, uh, what was it, uh, what was it, 
seven, eight years old, and I was into it. They were my favorite, you know, cartoon uh, that I want to watch, and it was very a nostalgic sense watching this film because I saw all the characters that I grew up watching, but I just felt like it wasn't a Turtles film. I just felt like these characters were not used to its fullest. And the story itself was lacking. Uh, there's no real actual motivation behind any of the characters, especially the antagonists. You feel like they're just one-dimensional characters. That's how I really f felt when I watched the, f the film. I felt like you were lacking not just motivation, but you were also lacking character development. I mean, another thing is the CGI that was done on the Turtles, it took me out because even though you were watching the turtles interact and, and bite and kick and all, do all these things, uh, they still looked very f much fake compared to the rest of the environment. Uh, I felt like uh, no matter how much I tried to get into the film, I still noticed that it's a CGI turtle, it's a CGI person. Uh, it wasn't an actual real tangible thing that I could touch or turtle that I can touch. Um, I know in the original films, Back in the 90s, they were had rubber suits, but they were done very well to the point where they were very tangible. You could see them, you could see the eyes, you can see the mouth, and yeah, it was it looked very much real compared to these ones that look more like a video game. It feels like a video game when you watch the, the film. Um, you also have uh, certain characters that are coming back and other, character, other new characters that, uh, again, you feel like they didn't nail. Um, Casey Jones was played by Stephen Amell who comes out as Arrow and you understand where he's coming from uh, this character this interpretation of uh, Casey Jones is a type of character that he's a clean individual he's an officer and he wants to be a detective and he he wants to move on in life and you root for him in that sense but the Casey Jones that was done in the previous films um, the 90s films, and not just in the 90s films, but in the comic books, and even in the animation, was a very uh, rugged individual. He's a hardcore person. He was from New York City, and he knew his, his way around the streets, and he is somebody that you didn't want to cross late at night. And in this one, Casey Jones is the type of person that you can, you can see yourself, you know, hanging out, you know, hanging out at a, at a restaurant. And eating tacos. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of weird, but yeah, um, I felt like Casey Jones. Casey Jones was not done the way it should have been done, which is you know a person who's a vigilante, and he he's not all there. He's you know he's out there. He he's 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 dangerous. You can say. And this one, he was very you know cut and clean, and he's a correctional officer, and he. Um, he, he's, he sometimes comes out whining. <laughs> he's whining about certain things. Uh, and it's just certain things that I felt like if Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon and Michael Bay went further on with the franchise and do a, a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 3, they need to work on certain things, especially character development and also story-wise. Because in this film, there were so many, not just plot holes, but inconsistency. I mean... It's like the laws of physics were just thrown out and logic and facts also was thrown out. And I understand some people may say, well, it's, it's based off a cartoon, it's based off a comic book. It's, it's turtles that eat pizza to fight crime. Come on. But I think uh, one thing I can say with that is even though they're turtles, they are ninjas and they fight and they fight crime and they eat pizza, at least respect your audience. You know, respect your audience. Give them a good story. Give them characters that they can root to. And give them an antagonist that they fall in love with. Now, do I recommend this film for the family? Uh, no, wait until it uh, comes out as a rental. Um, don't go to the theaters with your family and expect, uh, you know... I mean, yes, you will probably have a good time with your kids because your kids will have a great time watching the film. But you yourself, because you're a fan of the Turtles and grew up with the Turtles, you, you won't be happy. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> You'll be like, well, wow, really? This is what they made? Yeah. 
So I really do appreciate all my subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. And thank you so much for messaging me. And thank you so much also for, you know, um, just watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. Um, Jesus is king. Don't forget about that. He's the way, the truth, and life. Without him, there's really no hope to get to heaven. And uh, also, thank you so much also for anything else you guys will want me to preview. Uh, I've been gonna be. I'm gonna be reading some books uh, this coming up uh, summer, and uh, I'm gonna bring you the reviews for those books. Also, my television review. I'm working on that because I don't watch too much television at all. Most of the things I do is either work, uh, work out, and uh, do reviews on things that I've done. But no, I mean other than that, TM uh, and TMNT. Out of the Shadows, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows, is, uh, is a rental. It's a rental. So, thank you so much, guys, for your time. Peace. Later on to the next time.